Hi, and welcome to this year's first School of Ridiculous Inventions. What we're going to do today is the augmented reality cardboard submarine. And my goal is to make it possible for you to make it with any kind of technology. You have a makey makey, if you have uh, the Quirkbot, our first robotic kit, or if you have the robotic inventions. For the microbit kit, uh, you should be able to build this amazing experience any way you want to. The first step in making a project, scoping, laying it all out there and figuring out what to do and how. The most important thing in any problem solving or invention mechanism is actually splitting it down into different pieces, small enough chunks for you to start solving. So uh, let's get started. So I need to make obviously the cardboard submarine. And there's some features I wanted to have, which is I want it to be collapsible so you can hide it under your bed or something if it's in your room. Modular so you can expand on this. Well, obviously easy to make, uh, easy to disassemble or collapse. We're going to use code to enhance the fort experience. Uh, I'm going to use Scratch because I want you to be able to add content to the ocean. I want it to be able to control movement and get experience through movement and down. When you do this ocean exploring, I also want something physical to be given to you if you find something down in the deep ocean. So I need some kind of dispensing mechanism. I'm, when I say dispensing mechanism, I need something to deliver something into the submarine. So, and I want that to also be modular, to be able to use ball pits to represent that you find something. And the fourth part is the interface, so how you control the submarine. And this will vary a little bit depending on which system you have. What I mean by that is whatever cardboard interface I make, it will communicate to the computer or the, the brain of the project through keyboard input. And all these things together uh, make up this awesome project. So uh, let's get started. So then I just designed uh, the submarine shape like this and I used my strawberry bolts. So I'm going to put the last one in here. So there it is, the segment. So here's my pseudocode before I start coding. Uh, this is how I broke down the project. I need controls up, down, along the uh, Y axis. I need controls backwards and forwards. I need to be able to analyze and I need to be able to find creatures that are spread randomly in this ocean. The ocean will go from zero to 1000. And when you go out on the right side, you come in on the left, which means it actually looks more like a cylinder trench. So that's my pseudocode. Let's start chipping off on this project. Okay, earlier prototype. This is just to see that the movement and sound works. Yes, the parallax is nice. So this is my incredibly shitty prototype of the object found system that will uh, dispense of uh, a sample from the ocean represented by these ball pit balls into the submarine. Uh, the code is running here. So what's going to happen is when I press space or when I find an object Every time I find any object, you get points, but it also changes the variable object found to one. That's a representation of you finding one of the unique items in the ocean. And then you get a sample here. So let's try it. So I'm gonna press space here. Yep. <laughs> this was a very quick and dirty prototype. Let's see if we can get another sample. Yeah. This is going to be triggered by the screen and this is the compartment. So there a trigger. And there it is in the compartment for your samples. You have a little compartment so you know that something has happened. You get your sample inside. The submarine will only be going different speeds, like just a representation of the submarine. Here is an awesome submarine. There's a propeller. And the submarine will be moving forwards 
and backwards through the water. It will have observation deck out to the side. Uh, so we need something to control this. It will also be able to go down and up. Interface part one, interface part two is, interface part one is going forward or backward, interface part two is going up or down. And interface part three is analyze button. So let's see, I've now finalized this first contraption and I'm gonna test it and then oh you hear something you have to break 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 and we're down go to neutral my colleague uh, Chen Chen came up with an amazing idea of using the second piece the dive and climb I'm gonna make it a, a valve you open the valve and you let water into your ballast tank so it sinks and then the other way you push out the, uh, the water with air pressure. So I'm going to use that because uh, that's pretty cool. It's more like a submarine. Here it is. You can see uh, the switches. This is pretty neat actually. So uh, now I've invented two new switches in this episode. These are really nice. So while I'm here testing the, uh, the interface, this pushes air out of the tanks. Yeah. So that means I increase pressure in the tanks. So it pushes out the ballast water. And then the other direction lets water into the tanks. And I have equilibrium and then I can sink. So I think this is working out really nicely. Water. And the animation is working really smoothly and nice. Everything is tip top. This is almost ready to install in the system. So here we have it. A speaker, you can have any kind of speaker, well, one screen at least. Uh, for the bonus round we have the wall dispensing mechanism. Uh, and then we have the sample collection uh, quirk bot. And then inside the submarine we have... Interface is connected through a USB out to the computer. The system is up and running. This is absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna leave you guys for a while and uh, you'll see and hear what happens. So this is crazy! So now I'm diving. <laughs> on real life subjects uh, uh, kids uh, yeah. three berry yeah <laughs> you can hear are you inside and in the and in the yeah. bottom yep. yeah they are actual that it's not just samples that I'm playing <laughs> super cool okay uh, so I'm going to turn on the system and we'll see what happens if all the subsystems in the submarine work very exciting anybody there yeah Oxygen tanks full. You have 10 minutes of oxygen. Dive to start exploration. Yeah! <laughs> Backa, 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 backa. 
analyzing. <laughs> when threatened, the pufferfish expands up twice its size by dumping water. Analyzing. A siphonophore is not a single animal. It is a colony of four kinds of zooids. Zooids are very small, highly modified individuals. So, uh, uh, I'll translate. It, it feels, feels good and it was really fun. Uh, are you saying that because I, I, I'm here? Saying it for you, I'm here. <laughs> so they're promising it was actually fun. What do you think about this school? Jättekul! Very cool. And what do you think about to make your own birds to put in the water? Jättekul! Maybe to choose facts and then can you think that you would do an update when you go around and then you can gather up the facts and remember that as an easier test. I think you would build a type of flight plan where you would choose djur som är i luften. Precis, det är en superbra idé. Det är exakt så. Det är det vi vill ska komma igång. Så jag måste säga att det är det bästa jag har gjort. By far. Du måste bygga det. The immersive, submersible or the augmented reality submarine is by far my favorite project. But I wanted to do a debrief because this video has given me so much more ideas of what I want to do uh, in the future. But first I'd like to just go through what actually came out of this ridiculous project. So first of all, we got a great cardboard fort module using standard boxes. Uh, it's an easy system, we'll post the instructions on how to do that. Uh, so that can be done at home or in school if you want to make a similar experience like we did. The, th the second thing that I really enjoyed in this project is uh, the Scratch environments that we could develop. Like using Scratch not as a gaming platform in itself, but as a, a way of augmenting your experience. So to make these enhanced forts, make them uh, crossbreeding, learning with coding and, uh, and adding sound and visuals to a physical construction was amazing. The third thing was the, how much a project like this adds possibilities for collaboration in code. You can take different uh, as we said before, subsystems from the submarine and let different groups of students solve the different systems as long as you as a teacher define the interface. Another immersion aspect was the addition of the physical ball delivery system. That physical component adds so much immersion. Then we come to the game design. Scarcity and diversity of all these creatures, that makes it also your curiosity engine is on when you go in there and the weight makes the reward even bigger so to get that balance of not finding things all the time you need to get into that mode of going into some kind of abyss uh, waiting to hear the sonar ping stop, stop, stop. and when the sonar ping comes your adrenaline comes on you have to stop the submarine in time to be able to push the analyze button and that game mechanic was so good. The interface immersion was enhanced so much. All the kids really reacted re well to the physical interface. To make it harder to control is what makes the game fun. To figure out how to do it well and repeatable, to, to, become, to be able to become better at controlling it, enhances the game value. So I'd like you out there to take this project and remix it. Add wind or add a snow environment. Add lights and sound from scratch, be able to do some stuff in your secret polar base or whatever it is. So keep inventing, have fun, please remix this project, post it, do any comments, and, uh, and uh, keep inventing. Bye.